Online Conversations. I'm your host, Tammy Pike, and today I have the gorgeous and divine Ricky Adams, Ricky Jane Adams, PhD. Ricky, from a personal um, journey with her, has allowed me so much to connect uh, with myself, with my intuition, and as well as with other like-minded women. She has created a, a beautiful community, which is just so nurturing and inspiring and allows women to share their wisdom as well. So a little bit about the beautiful Ricky Jane. So thank you so much, Ricky, for coming today. My pleasure, my great pleasure. So Ricky Jane, um, PhD, is a principal of Lightworker Institute and the creator of Intuitive Intelligence Method. The aim of the Institute is to lead the revolution in excellence in the intuitive sciences. Ricky Jane teaches all around Australia, including offering training in her flagship intuitive intelligence two-day workshop through to the 12-month intensive, the third level, contributing to a new generation of gold standard, widely abundant intuitive readers, mentors, coaches, and healers. Her mission is to connect as many people as she can get her hands on to the wisdom, the God voice that resides inside each one of us. We are all intuitive. And in the decades of immersive learning and applied research, Ricky Jane has created a system that powerfully connects people to their sixth sense. <laughs> Ricky Jane has a doctorate from the University of Melbourne in magical realism. She is a qualified transpersonal counsellor, Reiki master, and trained in the EMF balancing technique. She has spent over 20 years devoted to her spiritual awakening and is just a divine woman. <laughs> It's always a tough ask reading a bio, isn't it? Like, it's like, let's sound really natural, but you did a beautiful yeah. job. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I was like, but it's just so gorgeous, like with what you've done and what you've created. And, you know, it, it is just amazing how you've brought this all together. You know, like it, it's just, I know there's amazing women out there and they're all doing their beautiful thing and it is amazing. But to connect with you is like, connecting to a part of yourself, connecting to that, that mentor and that mother energy of nurturing and loving us. Do you know, like, I really feel that what you have is just so amazing. And I would love to, to know more on how you came to, to be where you are today. Yeah. Should we we'll do the backstory, hey? Yes, well, please. Yes, please. I'm, I'm really delighted to hear you say that, that, you know, hanging out with me means you meet that part of yourself because I think beyond everything else, beyond what's written in the bio, you know, my, my feeling is my success is measured by do you experience grace as I'm experiencing it? So in my presence, just as when I'm in the presence of you, do, you know, do we activate that state of grace for one another? And that's really, I think, what spiritual seeking is ultimately about, is that what do we gift? What do we leave behind? What's our service? What, what are we holding in, in the vibration around us? And if you feel more empowered, more enlightened, more delighted with your life as a result of spending time with me, then my job is done. I don't need to say anything. You know, that is, that is it. It's really just about activating what you already are. And you know, where this began for me, I think, I think one of the things that I take for granted, but I'm so grateful for, is that I was born into this, raised into this. And therefore, a lot of the kind of struggle of, of even having to convince myself, is this real, was never there for me. Mm -hmm. And that journey of, of kind of spiritual awakening was never a journey. It just was a state of being because of my mother's own journey. So my mother's generation, you know, she was born in the 50s. A lot of the women of her generation really had to do the knocking down the walls, knocking, you know, beating down a path for us so that we could walk through it. And then, you know, you being significantly younger than I will have a, an, an easier journey. And, and that is part of what I was gifted. So really, for me, it was all my life, all my life, I have known that my spirituality and I are one and that there isn't life and then there's spirituality. And, you know, that's had lots of its own other kind of interesting 
complications and, and kind of crises of faith attached to it. But I've never had to even ask myself, is this real? Um, and the people around me have never said, can you please justify why you're suddenly on your spiritual path? You know, it was just our life. And my mother is a great master channel and you would have met her, Tammy, at the, the last workshop of mine that you attended. And, you know, she, she is grace personified and she does hold an energy that has allowed me to walk a much easier path. Um, and so, yeah, it has been my entire life. And I think there are things that come with experience. Now, that doesn't mean that we can only consider ourselves serious spiritual seekers if we've been doing it a long time. That's not true at all. But there is, you know, how do I synthesize? How do I bring together all of the knowledge um, that I've gained? It's Well, it's, it's taken a great truckload of time, basically, is how. And it's taken a lot of... Um, practicing and testing and exploring and theorizing and reading and sitting and, and meditating and contemplating. And, and as a result, I feel very joyful about where I'm at because I've really, I've, I've had a lot of time, like three decades to kind of test it and play with it and joyfully experience it. It's better now. It's much better now, you know, now all the self-esteem and the self-worth is in place too. So now I can thoroughly enjoy it and take up that role, which I hope, you know, with the rest of my life, I look forward to being the old lady, you know, the old crazy lady sitting, you know, sitting there with, I don't like cats, but you know, some, whatever else is a great metaphor of, of being able to, to make other women particularly feel safe to be their mystical wild woman, because yeah, it's just so normal. So that's sort of that's sort of the genesis of all of this for me, I guess, is is the moment of my birth, really, which is kind of a, a, a huge blessing. Well, that's amazing because I guess you know you've had a lot of time to become ma a master in so many different areas of spirituality. I know, I know, master, but you know what I mean. A master in that you've been out of practice and implement yeah. it, and you're walking your talk. So, um, you know, I really feel that because you are fully embodying what you're teaching you have done so for a long time as well you have that deep grounding with it it's not this new excitement of i've just realized you know it's all just come to me you've, yeah. you've lived and breathed for it for so long that it's just so deep and natural and ingrained in you that you when you share it's just so strong and it's just so confident it's just so you know, it's like that, um, the tree, Mother Earth, um, that's, you know, the wisdom tree, you know, you, it's just, you, it's that, and it's gorgeous because you're sharing that with others and they're able to connect to their wisdom as well. And um, it's, it's just an amazing way of being, I guess, and allowing that space to take place. With doing this, I guess, and turning it into, um, you know, um, monetizing I guess your your gift but it's also sharing your passion in a way that you can live your life doing what you love how did that come about yeah well the institute is is I guess the the way that that has happened for me and you know really I guess that is a question for a lot of spiritual seekers and a lot of people who are waking up is that well now I know what life is actually about this is all I want to do so if this is all I want to do, how the hell do I make it work for, for 3D reality? Because I still need to function in the world. I need to feed my children. I need to, you know, contribute to my, the running of my home. And so that, that is very, it's a really good question. It's a really um, pertinent question because we can often feel very frustrated when we wake up and can't then turn our entire lives around to suddenly be, you know, devoted yogis and spiritual seekers and healers and go and hang out in Egypt under the, you know, pyramids, because that's what our soul feels like it wants to do. And we still want to go to work and pay the bills and, you know, mundane reality. For me, I think that is part of the, you know, the previous question of, of, time it's okay for things to take time because our impatience is a wonderful evidence of our waking upness but it doesn't mean that we have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. and so i'm going to talk very frankly here i guess and very straight as a spiritual entrepreneur what is good business sense how do you make this sustainable and how do you actually bring your entire life into a state in which it's in coherence or congruence as caroline mace would say so that what i do for a living is also in alignment with what my soul wants to be doing and i guess the answer to that tell me is be patient one and, and be okay with taking time you know the institute is now in its only in its third or fourth year now i've 
had different spiritual businesses. But this is the first time that I felt that all the parts of my life, including the age of my children, permitted me to give myself over to the creation of the Institute, which is like another baby. And this baby is demanding and it needs a lot of attention. And it often means that I am neglectful of all the other parts of my life. But I felt confident that when I began it, I was ready to give myself over to it completely. That also means financially that I felt ready to do that. And here's the thing, and this sort of comes up quite a lot. What I didn't do was stop doing all the other things that brought me an income. I began the Institute whilst also, you know, my background is an academic and a researcher. And I continued really up until the beginning of this year, um, although I have people who work for me now, with my muggle job, with my um, day job, if you like, is in evaluation and research. Now, the reason I did that is because I wanted to give the Institute the freedom to grow and expand without the pressure of financial remuneration. And I think this is a really important point, Tammy, and I hope I'm answering your question because I feel like for a lot of women who, particularly women, we'll talk specifically to women here, but um, anyone who wants to be on the path of, of their work is, is what their soul is calling them to do. So their service and their, and their day job are one and the same. That is a profound thing when those two things line up. The last thing you want to do is put yourself in such a financial situation that you cannot uh, follow your intuition. Because when you move out of 3D reality into working your soul as your, as your path, you're going to have to give up what you think you know about how things work. And for a time, that may not be reflected in your bank account. You may not immediately start getting the clients that you want. There may be work that you need to do to bring everything into alignment. And, you know, there's lots of ways I could segue here. And I want to talk about the fact that you don't have to be perfect before you can serve. That is not what I'm saying at all. But there may be things that need to come into place. You put the prayer out or the request out into the universe. And if you don't get an instant feedback, you go, oh, well, God's forgotten me. Everything's ruined. I'll just have to go and get a job at the bank. But what if we actually just gave up this idea of human time? So, what, you know, what I would say to anyone who is looking to make their life's work, their, their soul work, is, you know, have a good plan and have a bridge between where you are to where you want to be. And part of that bridge needs to be really careful financial consideration. You know, Elizabeth Gilbert talks about this in Big Magic. She's very clear that in her decades of writing before she became a, an international phenomenon, she never tried to make her writing her financial job. She worked in a bar or she worked in a cafe and then she would take time off and she would write. And that worked very well for her, partly because she didn't have children and all those sorts of things, but because she never asked her soul's calling to show up as the financial, um, you know, responsible one in, in, in her life. Now, at some point, of course, when you are congruent, and we can talk more, if you like, about what that word means, when head and heart are aligned and you're actually following your intuitive intelligence, you cannot fail. Mm -hmm. But our fear will tell us things that are not true about our soul's calling. And then we get, all com we get very complicated with it all and we give up before we've even begun and we blame our faulty intuition. When in fact, it was just our ego fear saying, well, if, if I was really meant to be on this path of service, then I would have 200 clients the moment I opened my door and everything would be perfect. You know, that is, that is not the way it works. It's, it's all about congruence and coherence. And so we can break down those terms and talk about them more fully. But I hope that sort of answers some of your, your questions. Yes. So for me, you know, the Institute came at a time in my life where I felt like I was ready to lead and I had raised my family to the point where I could step out of that intensive mothering role and I could give myself um, the opportunity to, to really be 100% with, with this, you know, maybe 99%, maybe my family gets some of my time. Not very much, God bless them, but they're okay with that. They love me anyway. <laughs> Well, I guess that's the thing I, what mothers struggle with is knowing that they don't have to be the mother all the time. You know what I mean? They can still find themselves and be who they need to be. And as long as you have a good support network and are able to make it work in a safe and beautiful way, then that's great. You know what I mean? But it's really, I think women 
uh, are, are shedding that to a certain degree, but still it's very strong hold in the societal view of that mothers are meant to be home looking after the children, the mothers need to be the all for everything, the whole family. And it's only taking me like this last year to, of seven, eight years of mothering to step out and go, you know what, I, I have done everything I can for my children, but I can still be me. And, you know, my husband says sometimes it's difficult um, for them to get used to not having me 100% of the time. Yeah. And I had none of me. Do you know what I mean? Like it was so draining and I lost me. I lost my passion. I lost that love of life. I love my family, but I still wasn't following my heart either. I was just thinking I had to be everything for everyone and lost that. So thank you for really sharing that too, because it, it, it's not giving permission, but it's making women aware that it can, it can work. You know what I mean? You can can have a family and can follow your business as long as you have a good um, group of community um, surrounding and nurturing you and your family as well and helping you to fulfill your dreams as well. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's fascinating to me. This topic often is comes up and I'm very happy to talk about it even though I, can, I consider myself probably the least qualified mother on the planet because I don't have I've never had that sense of my children being my primary relationship my primary primary relationship is with my soul and that can be really uncomfortable for other people to hear and it can be really uncomfortable for my husband to hear yeah. but it's not something that I have any um you know there's no concerns in me about it at all it just is what it is Part of that is knowing that I am one with all that there is and therefore my life is not separate from their life ever. You know, one of the beautiful images I use with my son, my youngest son is four and a half and I'm about to go away on retreat and, and on tour for a couple of weeks. And, you know, that's an extended time that he will be without me. And for both of us, that's a big deal. But I prepare him energetically. We have a visualization that we use that between his um, belly button or umbilical cord to mine, we are connected. And upon that cord, we may send um, energy, whatever energy we want. He's quite confused about why we can't send presence along the umbilical cord of, of energy, but that we are intimately connected. So I'm trying to give him skills now that are about understanding that our physical location does not affect our our relationship, our intimacy, our connectedness, and that he may feel as loved and nurtured by me at any time when he just tunes into that belly button image and he can see that cord of energy between us. Now, you know, some people would say, well, he's four and a half, you should stay home with him. That's, that would be a good mother, but, but that's not the mother that he was born to. And in a way, it's fascinating to me that we even have to have this conversation, but I'm glad we are. So we have a very uh, religious Christian paradigm informed idea of, of the mother mm -hmm. as an archetype. And the mother is self-sacrificing, all giving. Um, everybody else's life takes, takes precedence. And she, if she is going to bring life through her body, which as a woman, if she doesn't, we're all very suspicious of her, then her singular role is to nurture that life at the expense of, of everything else. Now, whether we are aware of that in our daily life or not, no matter how supportive our partner is, no matter how loving our families are, no matter what we think we know about ourselves, that idea sits in our collective unconscious as a human, as a human civilization and says, if you are a mother and you step outside of that role, you're betraying your children, you're betraying the trust of your partner, and you're going to effectively be bringing down the fall of civilization. Now, this sounds very dramatic, but it's nicked into the collective unconscious. So it's not like we have to think about this as we're sitting there having our wee picks in the morning. It's, it's like it's in ourselves mm -hmm. and it's very hard to step outside of that mold. Even the fact that we have to say to our partners, things are not going to look like they looked before means that there was an assumption that things should look a particular kind of way at all. Yeah. So it's not that we are asking more of our partners. It's simply that we are asking all of us to remember that these assumptions are not actually the truth. And when we break down these inherited 
very old assumptions, you know, thousands of years of positioning mothers and women in a particular way, we begin to recognize that just because my body can bring life into the world, and yes, that is my superpower, does not mean that I then have to become the primary caregiver of everybody I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, in my family, we have a constant kind of negotiation of how do we manage that when the woman is not going to play the role of of you know not even if we yeah sure but my husband helps with the house my you know all of those great things but what if i actually say my soul my role as a mystic my life as the high priestess will be first mm -hmm. and that will be how my family and my life is built and and we will all find a new order out of that i mean that is revolutionary thinking but we women, we are the mystics. You know, we have been subjugated. We have been beaten. We have been burnt. We have been tortured. We have been drowned. It all sits in our, our subconscious. And we think that the choices we are making are for our own personal freedom. But in fact, we're making that choice on behalf of all women. Every time we do not assume the role of servant in our own lives. And there are degrees to this, Tammy, and I know that, uh, you know, I'm giving you a very long answer here. No, I, I love this. Like... This is what's needed. Thank you. <laughs> it is, you know, there's so much, there's so much giving away of our power. You know, it just, it just kind of, it breaks my heart and it shouldn't because it means I have a judgment about it and I should surrender that judgment. But, you know, the number of women who I encounter who cannot make a choice for themselves without asking their partner. Now, this is different to two people who are negotiating a life together. That is, that is exciting when you have two strong pillars who are building something together. But there are very often what I witness is not me as my strong pillar, my independent self, going to tell my partner what is happening for me. It's, can I please have, do you mind if, I would like to step out of this assumed role that I will be the primary caregiver and I actually don't want to be available in that way. And it's moving, you know, it's really the difference between can I get permission to be my wild, mystical self or am I actually, you know, if, if I don't, I'm trying not to sound obtuse, but it's, it's all degrees. So even if you have a really wonderful partner and a really great support network, you may still be positioning yourself as this naughty girl who's doing something that she shouldn't be doing if she chooses to step outside of the dominant paradigm that, that is the role of mothers in our world. Getting a bit ranty. I tend to I do love it. <laughs> no, I love this because it's so real. And I think women are needing to hear this. You know, they don't hear it enough. We talk about, you know, oh, you know, follow your dream, put yourself first, all that kind of stuff. But it's really, you, you have seriously explained the root of it and how deep it goes. Because it's not just on the surface, it's subconscious, it's in our DNA, it's being built into us. And yeah. it's up to us to make the choice, to make the changes, to be the role model for our children. I don't want my child doing and going through what I had to go through. They'll do their own journey, yes, but I want to allow and clear that way for them as much as possible and show them that they have a choice to choose what they wish to do. If they want a family that's beautiful, but don't come absorbed in it, still be yourself. And mm -hmm. I, your honesty and truthfulness in what you said is so freeing. Do you know what I mean? That we get to live our soul and I'm just access, accessing that now. And that's 31 years or something. You know what I mean? Like it's taking me this long to understand I am my own person and that it's okay. And it's more than okay. It's right to live my life, how I feel inside. And yeah. that is, again, negotiating, that is, you know, making sure everyone's safe and happy, but still not feeling guilty that I'm going away for 10 days and bettering myself or, you know, whatever it is I'm doing. It's knowing that this is what's right for me. And when I come home, I'm more nurtured. I'm more, more me. And I can give and share who I am with my children even more so and teach them even more. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my great, great pleasure. It is, you know, the very, very real truth of it is that for some, you know, 8,000 years, women have been slowly reduced 
And that is changing now, and that has been changing since, you know, since the last century, we are beginning to reclaim, but it is such, we are, you know, we are reclaiming our political rights, we're, we're reclaiming our economic rights, we're reclaiming our, you know, our domestic rights, we're reclaiming everything in this very human way, which is so important, and it's the precursor, but now we need to reclaim our spiritual power, because we are born into the female body, because we are the mystics. We are the portal or the gateway to the divine. And that is why it is the divine feminine that will change the world. That is why the Dalai Lama says it is the Western woman who will change the world because we have the economic freedom. We have the political freedom. And now we have the spiritual freedom. It is no accident when your soul chooses to incarnate into the female form. It is because you have said, I will be the keeper of the mysteries and I am I am the holder of that power and the divine feminine power has been so far maligned that we do not even realize that we continue to subjugate ourselves before the man. And that is, I'm not talking about your husband. I'm not talking about my husband. They're good men. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the imbalance between the masculine and the feminine. And we have been told for thousands of years because of the jealousy because of the fear, because of the suspicion of our power as women, as keepers of the sacred, that there is something wrong with us. So our self-esteem is at, in ashes, in ruins. And until we write that, until we bring our spiritual self-esteem back into balance, we will be the victims of our own lives. And and even women who are in their power, if we exist within a cultural paradigm as we do that says you are literally worth less, I will literally pay you less. You know, why do you think women are the leaders of this entrepreneur movement? Because we have to get out of the system that says you're worth 70% of a man's dollar. Like we have to break free of that system. But the conversations that happen mostly are about the physical reality. And when we actually start talking about the divine feminine when we start talking about our sacred selves as as the vortex of power of, of spiritual power in the world then we will truly be making a, a, a paradigm shift in which you know the woman the the women will be revered we will be worshipped you know how far away is that from where most women are in their lives you know how many of us are literally worshipped for what we contain within us and the power that we contain within us so very few and we are very suspicious of of women who are in their power and we begin as you know my darling and this is what you're doing and this is what i'm so proud of we begin with the sisterhood you know we raise each other up because when we give up our suspicion of one another which has been culturally indoctrinated by this imbalance we will begin to heal the wound and we will begin to change the world. And that's, you know, that is all happening at the level of the soul. It can't happen at 3D reality. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just feel like I've just been raised to a whole new level. I just, talking to you just is, I don't know, it just is, is amazing. And I guess I, I can't wait to other women to hear you because once they hear your words, there's no going back. Yeah. They have that knowledge inside themselves. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and now the women who are going to be listening to this, they're going to be on their own journey in, in whatever way. And, you know, at the start of their connection or wherever, mm -hmm. but how do they, I guess, you know, start how do they start to connect because this is where you rock this is where you <laughs> are such a, a, a inspiration and a light and a guiding light for women to do this this is this is it isn't it yeah yeah i think you start by you know it is a shift in perspective it's really nothing outside of you needs to change what you need to do is give yourself permission mm -hmm. And you may not even know what you're giving yourself permission for yet, but it is permission for you to be determining your own life. And that self-determination is something that we, we, need to, we need to begin with the self. We need to consent to the self that I am worthy. So, you know, Caroline May says she disappoints people when they ask her how to increase their intuition. And you would have heard me tell you this before. It's because to increase your intuition, you need to increase your self-esteem. 
You need to hold yourself in higher esteem. Because until you know that you are worthy of hearing the universe speak through you, then how can you possibly hear the universe speak through you? So it is, it, it is actually a process of, of, of self-worth, of looking at where you are not believing in your worth. And it is actually going beyond the stories because we all have really good stories as women as to why we hold unworthiness, you know, because women live in a paradigm in which our worth is reduced every single day, every single moment, everything around us, you know, advertising, it reduces us to body parts. It's like, it, it tells us the story of, of who we are based on how pretty our, our clavicles are looking or whether we've got the right arm muscles or we literally, if you look at advertising, you rarely see a whole woman's body. You see a body part. And so everything that's projected to us from the outside says your worth is based on how beautiful how pretty and how, you know, you know, in, innocuous you can be in a man's life or anybody else's life. Now, that's the kind of big kind of cultural feedback that we're getting. So if we are to increase our self-esteem, we need to change where we put our perspective. So, you know, very simple things. Stop watching TV. You know, stop reading trashy magazines. These are very simple things that you can do that will start giving you a different reflection seek out your sisters even if you don't know what that means you know google meetup or go and hang out with tammy and you know sit in circles with one another where you don't just bitch and moan about each other's lives and boyfriends and clothes and not you know that's vital we have to have that time too oh my god i don't want to be without that time but you also need to have opportunities where you just go and and you be together in a more sacred way now that's without me trying to be didactic because there isn't a philosophy. There isn't a religion. There isn't a belief system I want you to follow, but I would like, you know, if you're beginning this journey of recovering your self-esteem and self-worth rather than focusing on all the reasons why you don't have that intact right now, start putting your perspective on where you want to be and surround yourself with the things and the people that reflect back to you what you admire and like. So, you know, whenever a woman begins to wake up, she automatically becomes a leader and a teacher and a healer for her community. This is what the priestesses are. You know, my job is to train priestesses. And what that really means is to remind women that they have the capacity to, to serve one another and that it is not difficult. It's simply about saying, hey, do you want to do you want to be together in a way that is more sacred and more honoring of who we truly are? And as you say, that's not complicated. You know, that's just like two o'clock on Saturday, leave the kids with their dads or, you know, with their nanas or whoever you've got around you and let's come together and let's meditate for 20 minutes. And then let's talk about what that felt like to be outside of our normal paradigm. So, you know, it, it, it really is simply about permission giving. Can I give myself permission? And for some women, it will be as basic as can I give myself permission, as you were saying, to step outside of my children's lives mm -hmm. about half a day? You know, can you even give yourself that much permission? And there's some, some people who will, even that will bring up enormous fear. You know, for you, it's so exciting because you're really on your path and you're so devoted to your awakening. For some women, hearing this conversation will be terrifying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their first response might be to reject it and just say, this woman is selfish. She's crazy. She shouldn't have had kids. Who is she to bring people like life into the world if she's not going to stay home and be a good mother? And, you know, more power to them. There's probably truth in that. I'm defenseless. You know, I don't have anything to defend because my choices are 100% backed up by me. I'm, I'm in my corner. I don't need anybody else to be okay with my choices. And that might be right for them. But let's just open a little door to the possibility that your life is bigger than just being you know, that role of mother and partner and that the highest, most exciting purpose of your life is not to find a partner even like that idea that 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 is kind of the quest that most of us set for ourselves is like finding someone who we think is going to be the answer or just someone who's, you know, going to be amazing to spend our lives with. What if even that doesn't matter? What if that's just more of the beautiful, fun stuff, but actually it's got nothing to do with what we're really here for? You know, they're, they're, one of the things I bang on about a lot is this very, I'm very suspicious of the idea of soulmates. I'm very suspicious of the idea of twin flames. 
I'm very cynical about it, Tammy. I'm very cynical about anything that says there is something outside of me that's bigger than my relationship with myself. But I've kind of gone off on a tangent there. But, you know, it's consent. It's permission. Start giving yourself permission and changing your perspective. Look at where you're putting your focus. Does it reflect where I want to be? And that's just such a great way to start. And for the women who are just awakening to their inner voice, their inner knowing and inner knowledge, what is it that they can do with you? Because you, again, like I keep saying, you, you are such an amazing um, vessel and teacher in, in allowing women to connect to their intuition. And I just have to share. So I went to your workshop down in the Gold Coast and you were like, you know, you'll, you'll be able to, you know, read and um, listen to exactly what you're going to be able to, um, you know, what is your knowing, whether what um, sentience you are, all that kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, you know, okay. And we went through the things. I'm like, oh yeah, but I'm still not knowing. And anyway, we got to a point where you really like, you know, listen to yourself, listen to this, ask this. And, and, you know, your process was just amazing. In the end, I was giving readings by connecting to my knowing and the feeling that came up to it. You know, like, I was like, what? You know, I honestly didn't believe that I could do that. And I've done other stuff, but I've never had a place where I could do the whole process within a day, a day. Yeah. You yeah. did that. You allowed that space, that activation, and us com- me coming home to my knowing and trusting that. And you know, it, it's crazy how how you've been able to do it in such a way, in such a short space, where you it's not this you know ten week program of doing all this. Tra- you know, you have that where you can go deeper. But you connected mm-hmm. women who are ready to connect to that. So can you please explain more about these amazing workshops and um, training you have? Because it, it's phenomenal. Yeah. I, I'm, I want to just confirm that you did all of that and oh, yeah. you, you access all of that. And I'm very grateful that I got to, to hang out with you while you were doing it. But yes, I mean, the thing is that what we do, Tammy, with intuition is part of what we've done to women as keepers of the mysteries, as women, as the sacred power, as the divine feminine. We've reduced it to woo-woo. We said, that, mm. that's, you know, whatever, that's not really part of my life. Like, what would I need that for? Okay, it might be fun to go and activate my psychic skills or whatever, but it's all kind of marginalised. We make it insignificant. We make it seem reduced in importance. And that's been part of the systematic deterioration and decimation of the divine feminine and of women as those, as the priestesses in their sacred power. It's all part of that project. Who cares who that project came from? It doesn't matter. I'm not into conspiracy theories. What I know is the result is women do not value their innate superpowers. And we're all intuitive, not just women, but women have a particular pre, um, predisposition to it. So we are all intuitive, done, fact, come on, let's get over this. We are all six sensories. Let's change the conversation about intuition. So what I wanted to do was to create processes that were systematic, evidence-based, scientifically informed and, and replicable where you can come in at the beginning of the day and leave eight hours later absolutely knowing that you can read energy and that you are able to support the fearlessness of other people around you, and in particular women, because that's my personal mission, simply by following a system, because this stuff is actually not woo-woo, this is science, and science is evidencing it all the freaking time, but we, as a whole culture, are doing this. I don't know what you're talking about. Even other scientists, you know, I was hanging out with an incredible spiritual teacher on Sunday called Greg Braden, and he is one of the major proponents of bringing science and spirituality together. So his, all of his information is absolutely brilliant, peer-reviewed scientific um, journal articles and and research that is is being done by the top-level institutions around the world. And the evidence he provides is so compelling that we cannot look away. So what we've done as a whole society is to marginalize our spirituality as a way to not meet it, to reduce it, because that, that was part of you know, how how we are much more controllable as a civilization if we're disconnected from our power. So my journey has been to, okay, let's do away with dogma. Let's do away with religion. Let's do away with superstitions and trinkets and even crystals and oracle cards. And they're all lovely. I have a room full of them because they're pretty and I adore them. There's no power in those things. Where's the power? Mm -hmm. Here, 
in you, in me, and in us connecting. And when we hang out together, we create this exponential increase in our personal power. And so you had a room of 20 plus women around you all doing the same thing. So if you've been sitting at home trying to do that by yourself, it may have taken longer, you still would have got there. But you sit with your sisters in this sacred circle, you come into the temple of the priestess and suddenly everything I ask you to do, because I've seen it done before, you can do like that because you are expanded by that sisterhood, by that united power. But most importantly, because it was already there in you, my darling. And when we have systems, you know, this is where my training as an academic comes in is I'm a teacher, I'm a mentor, that these are my archetypes. I want to take knowledge and systematize it and make it replicable so that you do not think it's a special magic skill that only some people have. You know, it is simply about devoting yourself to following that system and you will get better every time you do it every time you give a reading i get better every time you know every time we devote ourselves to our non-negotiable practices we get stronger and clearer so it really is about understanding that this is not special it's not magic and it is also the most freaking incredible superpower but that superpower is absolutely within each and every one of us oh. Another long, long ranty answer. <laughs> no, don't please. It's exactly what we need to hear, you know. And um, you have um, a, like you're going on tour and yeah. that's going to be going all around Australia. Yes. And can you explain, like, let us know a little bit more about that as well? Yeah, so that begins actually this Friday here in Melbourne and Intuitive Intelligence is a two-day workshop, which is my foundation training. And effectively in these two days, you are perfectly primed to become the most intuitive that you possibly can be because of one thing. We go into your subconscious, we go into your energy field and we remove the fear because fear contracts. And fear reduces your connection to the infinite, reduces your connection to the universe of which you are a divine piece. And that is all intuition is. Intuition is a symptom of overcoming the belief in separation. Where there is fear, we are feeling separate and removed and apart from everybody else and from the universe and the infinite within ourselves. So we spend two days getting fearless. We go and meet our fear. You know, I started calling myself a fear hunter because that's really what I do. I go in and I look for your fear and I get it out. And that is what we do together in two days. And you will come out of that absolutely changed because, you know, we don't need to know the right crystal, the right mantra. We don't need the right books. We don't need anything outside of us. We are the power. And so this two days is about connecting you non-negotiably to that power. Now you can walk out and never use the practices that I give you ever again, but that door will still have been opened and eventually you're going to walk through it. But this is an accelerant, if you like. It's an intuition accelerant and really, it's really about moving you closer to love because at the end of the day, that is all there is. You know, if I was to, to look at my life as a spiritual seeker and all the things I've learned and all the different ways of breaking this knowledge down, all of the different experiences I've had, it all comes back to this. Love is all there is. And in your life, are your choices for love or are they for fear? And if they're for fear, you need to look at why. What are you doing? What are you trying to protect? Who do you think that you are that is not true? You know, so the question we should begin with and the question that I ask in the intuitive intelligence workshop is, do I know that I am unlimited, infinite consciousness? And if the answer to that is no, then you need to get your ass into this workshop so that you can remember who you are. And then you're unstoppable. It doesn't matter what you do, you are connected and life suddenly becomes absolute wild abundance, infinite joy and unlimited power because that's what you are. That's what you are. If you're not feeling like that today, then there's something between you and your true nature. And let's get it out. Let's move that block. And so where are they being held? Because this is, I, I hope so many women just get on board and start awakening with you because like I, I am stressing this throughout the whole conversation. You are just for someone, that, yeah, they're going to have to connect to you first and, you know, resonate with you. But no matter which way they connect with you, they're always going to gain knowledge and insight and connection. But if you're really wanting to get into yourself, to get this connection, 
please go to these workshops because you are going to just connect on a much deeper level and your life is going to change exponentially. Like it's, it's mind blowing yeah. how we were living and then after how life changes, you know what I mean? Becomes more, you see yeah. more, you feel more and you allow more opportunities to grow as well into your life. So where are your other workshops? Yeah. So after Melbourne, I am heading, um, oh, I'm heading to Bali for a retreat for a little while, but then the next workshops are on the Gold Coast, uh, March 11 and 12 in Rabina. Mm -hmm. Then Sydney at the end of April, April 29 and 30. And then uh, Denmark in Southwest of Western Australia, which I'm very excited about. That's such an amazing community down there and it's so beautiful. And that is May 20 and 21. Um, so there'll probably be another date in Melbourne in June as well, but um, <clears throat> that is that is the plan. And that's really, there's a good possibility, Tammy, that this will also be the last live tour of Intuitive Intelligence for quite some time. So it's certainly not something that, if you're thinking about it, don't hesitate because it's, yeah, it's absolutely. And you get an 80 page, or it's now a hundred page manual to take away, <clears throat> you know, because you do need to keep your, you need to keep going with this stuff. You know, becoming fearless is a lifelong commitment. Every damn day you've got to show up and you've got to move that fear out. And that, you know, that's the work of our lives is to become free. And that's really what this is all about. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ricky Jane. And I just appreciate your time, effort, energy, your truth, your rawness, your honesty, just being you activates me to be me. And um, I just thank you so very much for for this amazing enlightened conversation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, dear one. Thank you, dear soul sister. You're just such a gift, my darling. And you know, your your journey is just getting good. It's so exciting to watch. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, thank you everyone for taking part and we'll put all the details um, where you can contact Ricky Jane, how you can find more about her, um, her workshops, um, her trainings, anything that you need to know will be um, put there. Um, Ricky, what, what's, where's the best way to um, find you right now, like on, online? Yeah, if you want to um, head to Facebook, I have a Facebook group called I Am A Light Worker, all caps, and that's a really beautiful community, especially if you feel like you don't have a spiritual community, come and hang out there. That's a really amazing group. And if you want to learn more about the Intuitive Intelligence Workshops, just head to lightworkerinstitute.com.au and all the tour dates are up there. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I can't wait to yeah, see how this goes. And for the women who watch this, you know, if they get involved and actually take part and do themselves an honour in putting themselves first in the connection that they have, um, I really am so excited to hear about their journey as well. So thank you again and I'll talk to you soon. My great pleasure. Bye. All right. Bye.